Hello, and welcome to another Free Code Session. My name is Jason Bach, and I just trashed an episode that you'll never see because, as you can see here, the folder is completely empty. <laughs> I thought I had a solution to this problem, and then I realized as I was doing the talk through that I didn't. And so I went to take a shower, and I came back, and I started realizing I th think I've got a way to do this that's actually simpler. So first things first, previous episode, I did figure out what the problem was with the naming. The whole naming thing has to change in rocks. It's becoming overloaded, too confusing, doing too many things. And that needs to change. But for now, I just put in the fix that makes it work for the error that I found. And at some point, I will put in a fix for the names. I've also realized that I need to be a little bit better prepared. I thought I was with this episode when I just recorded it. And then as I talked through it, I realized, no, I don't. But hopefully now I, th I actually did a little proof of concept to prove this out. This is just reinforcing in my head that I need to be a little bit more prepared when I'm doing these recordings because I just, I, I, I personally want to do a decent job of it and go, going and doing episodes where I start getting more and more frustrated. I need to also realize when I need to just stop, do some work offline, come back and finish things off. You know, it just, otherwise I just start getting too mad. <laughs> I've done that a couple times now, including the last episode and it's not good. So hopefully with this thing, this will fix it. This this problem is, bec is because, I think it's here. If you have cases where you're, you are using types that, are, that need to be called esoteric, they need to have these projected types, uh, ref like types, pointer types, so on. If you're just doing it for one thing, like for example, string writer needs to do something for read only a span because it's being used there and read only span has a special case. So blah, 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 we do it. The, the point is if I have text writer, text reader, other things within system IO that are also using a span of char, read only span of char, what ends up happening is you, if I scroll all the way back up here, what ends up happening is you generate these things, but really this thing and potentially the others. They become duplicates because they're all in this namespace, okay? So I've got to have a way to scope them so that they're only valid for really this stuff, for the stream writer that's in system.io. And I went through and I came up with some ideas and some possibilities, none of which I really liked. I thought I was down the right path with an idea I had, but that was actually gonna take some work and I was kind of dreading it. And as I talked through it with the recording that is literally gone from the face of this <laughs> earth now, is it, it, would have take, it would have taken a lot of time to put in and it wouldn't have ended up working anyway. There's just too many cases that it would have come into with types that are going to end up being the same namespace and blah. So what I realized is these projected types that are made, basically everything before you do the create, let's all put them in their own namespace. And you can see this with this little demo here. I said, well, let's just put these in a namespace called projections for stream writer. And this will be in the system IO namespace. I just did. Okay. Now, anytime I reference it, I'm going to have to put that little namespace thing in front of it. So I have, I have a way to say, give me the, the delegate name or the projected name. Um, give me the declared projected name. That would be this. Give me the referenced name. That would be this. And so I also need to know, well, for what type is the namespace going to be? Or, or I just keep that around somehow or however I do it. But I just have to make sure that anytime I'm going to, you know, maybe this has a pointer in it or I'm returning it or I need to use it within a method or a callback or whatever the case may be, I just always have to have a way to say, oh, by the way, make sure that you're actually doing this as a projected, um, with the right 
namespace thing in front of it. Then if I did something for like text writer, I just threw this in here and it did the same things. These would be referencing this. Now this is a duplication. Arguably, I don't need to do this more than once, but it solves the problem. <laughs> for lack of a better term, it solves it. And I don't have to think about how do I get these things to all like have one shared thing that everybody else uses. Oh, it was going to be a mess. I saw my camera readjust again. I saw it again. And I looked and I couldn't find in Windows 11 where you can say, dear camera, stop trying to, I did something like this and that made it go like wonky. I don't know why, but maybe because I had the lights and you know, it, and I'm just waving my hands for no reason. I don't know. But in any event, no, I do not want to take a survey, go away. Thank you very much. So this is actually good because I got distracted. This is good because all I have to do is put the projected type creation within a namespace. That's it. That's one thing. And then anytime I reference it, any one of these types, I have to put that namespace dot in front of it. That's it for anything else after um, when you do the creates, you do the expectations, you make the mock, anything. All you have to do is put that in front of it and that will solve this. So let's get to it. Let's actually make this happen. So the first thing I think, wait, what? what I just noticed, I, like it said, save something. And I went, no, or yes, or I don't know. I don't think it was anything like of saving because I really haven't done anything that should be there. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Let's, well, yeah, we have this. Oh, so it, yeah, stashes, I don't have anything. So and this was just like when I changed the code generation desk. Good. Okay, so actually let's, because that's the thing we want to keep. This is what creates, like, for example, if I come back here, this is what creates these delegates. This is what creates the arg types. This, this is what creates the adornments builders. We want all of these. What is an adornments builder? I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Internal exception, expectations, wrapper extensions. Um, Sure. I guess I don't see that here. Why would we build these? The method does not, re if it's return type is esoteric, then we have to add it to the adornment type. Okay. And then we select to a list. If we actually have any, we build handler information, we build an extension method thing, and we build a dormant information type thing. This becomes the, the, what is this? This is a return type. So this is referencing the thing, but this isn't, this is internal to it. So anything internal to stuff that's being projected, it doesn't need to put a dot in front of it. It's only things outside of it that we need to be careful about and it might just be easier to just tack on like a you know we know what the name is going to be so what we'll see but what we really need to do here is put this into its own namespace okay so let's do that let's say writer dot write line and what we want to say here is namespace and what is this going to be what did I just say it's going to be? Projections for. And this is where we need to fill in a hole. What is the hole? The hole is the name of the type that we are actually trying to mock. It's so like you see your create expectations of stream writer, whatever that is. So where would create expectations be? Um, mock type builder. No, that's the actual mock type. We don't need to go there just yet. Mock builder. So we say mock projected types builder. Then we say create expectations of 
type to information type to mock flatten name that's what we need okay there so we've got that right on that red line put in that okay we say writer dot red line no we say indent and I know what I'm already thinking here which is what happens if we don't need to do this <laughs> How do we know that we actually need to do this? You know, because right now, I believe these are just saying, if you need this, and if you need this, and if you need this. I guess at the end of the day, we are just saying, well, we're going to create this namespace here, projections for this, which in all likelihood should not collide with anything, okay? And if you just so happen not to actually build anything in there, so what? We have a namespace in there that's kind of useless. I guess I'll put a to do in here and to say to do. Technically, we may not have any need for projections, but for now, it's just easier to admit it at some point. We may want to do the, maybe we want to do the, the work to figure out that we actually created projected types. And in that case, we'll create the namespace. What if I say writer dot write? What can I pass into right here? A bool, a string, a string, a char, a string. Can you give it another? No, you can't. But you can say writer dot to string, because I think that's what we do in mock builder at the end of the, no, you know, not mock builder, but in the rock create builder, which is at the end of the day, we say to the writer outside, to string it. What we could do is in here is create our, and I don't know how well that would go. One thing I was thinking of is we could create our own internal indented text, text writer, write out all the stuff and then say, here you go. But I don't know if it would have all the indentation. Well, it should, because we could say indent, that's just like a a number, yeah, we could just say the current indentation for the text writer is that. Let's try that. I feel adventurous right now. Var projected writer. And so we're basically going to follow this. Using var projected writer is equal to new string writer. Using var projected indent writer is equal to new indented text writer. Now this is actually going to lead to a problem because right now <laughs> this is actually some, okay, here's the problem. I don't trickle the configuration values through to everything. This is on a rock create builder, not uh, mock information. The configuration values are outside of it because we always said, here's one. So I'd have to now somehow trickle those configuration values in. What I could have done is say, well, based on the current indented text writer, tell me your your tab style. Tell me your, your your what your indent style wants to be. But you can't find that on an indented text writer. This is actually, and I'll remember to put the link in to the description. This is an issue I put in to say, in, a, in an indented text writer, you know what the tab string is in terms of it it itself knows what it is. There's a field, an underscore tab string field, but that's not exposed as a property. So you can't read that outside of the indented text writer. And there was a reason I, I said that this would actually be you know, helpful. I'm actually finding another one because I want to know here what that tab style is. I can't find that unless I would do some reflection. So 
I can say here one way to do it would be to create a local indented text writer that the builders would write to. And if we got any string content out of that, we just put it into the writer. However, we can't determine, while we can reuse the indent value, we don't know what the tab string value is. So we can't reliably pass that into a local indented text writer. I could put the link here, couldn't I? Hold on. So this is the issue. This is the one I put up in here. And now there's actually, they, they basically said it's a future milestone. And you could say, oh my God, this is really simple. You you literally just need to add this on to indented text writer and you're done. But, you know, it, it's still a thing that they would have to add. And I definitely don't think it's going to be in .NET 7. So we're going to kind of have to, for now, just create the namespace and let it be. And we'll do writer dot right line here just to make sure we got some space. Okay. First chance at it. So this should all work because we've indented and now we're going to put all that stuff in there and we come out. Now what we need to do is anywhere that we're referencing these things, we need to put projections for this. Okay. In front of it. Now I'm just going to make myself a note here to say it needs to be that string content. Okay. We already have the name. We just need to always put that in when we're referencing stuff. So how am I going to do this? I need to know when you are calling certain things. So for example, like if I come up in here, right callback, when would I be calling that? That would be when I'm basically saying method handler dot method. So if I come in here, I'm guessing method handler dot method. That's got to be somewhere in the value builder. Yep. This is the method cast. What is the method cast? So if we're calling get projected delegate name, Okay. So here, what we need to do is say it's actually, um, it's this, what am I doing? That goes out. And then it would also be that. Okay. But what's this thing we want to put in here? Glad you asked. That should be, and I hope that we're passing that in here. We're not because we do not. Pat. Well, we get the in the bill. We should. Oh, crap. Well, we got to trickle that through. There, there's <laughs> there's no way to do this otherwise, unless I somehow was smart. Nope, I wasn't. Well, because I never needed it. Now I do. So this, this is going to take a look. I mean, this is going to be, I think, less work than what I did before. It's just I'm not passing in over things that I need. And what would be the right thing that I would need here? I need the type to mock flatten name, but is it better just to pass over mock information? I would think so. Yes. So if I come back down to the error here, this is in method handler. Um, so let's force the issue. Okay. Why don't you? Yeah, now you do. And now that causes a bug here because build method handler does not have that. What's the right place to put this in with the methods? If I say mock builder here, 
I'm always passing in the information after the writer. It doesn't matter. It just to be consistent with how I'm doing it in other places would be a good thing. Okay. So now here we need to say writer information, which you don't know what that is. Do not worry. We will get to that in a second. Now we say information. Okay. Inform you sh Okay, now now you're good. Information is not being passed into here. We need that passed in. That now makes that go away, but now we've got something up here where we don't know what information is. Or here either. Information which should cause both these a break because you don't know what that is. Now you do, which is great. But if we come up to whatever called this, that needs to now put in information. Do you know what that is? Yes, you do. So that took care of that, that one spot took care of that. Now, <laughs> I did all that because I needed to say, where was that? <laughs> where was that? Well, I just captured it here. Yes. You can already see I'm not doing the right thing. Dot, we need the dot there. You have to remember the dot, okay? But that's one of them. Let's see where this is being called as well. It should probably be in a couple of other places. Requires projected delegate. And that's really what we need is whatever this is from. Wherever requires projected delegate is, that's at least one thing we need to grab onto. What about, because this is also in the right here. How would I? <laughs> What's a great? Hmm. If I said method handler expectations, okay. And now I said, oh, well, that's even better that I could even find that. I don't match whole world only, yeah. As archetype. So a couple of other ones to look for is this. Let's put that up there. Ref like type, get projected name. Okay, so let's go back here. Yes, we want to save all the changes. Go to this. Okay. Let's knock these off one by one. This is an explicit... Uh, yeah, the, you have to remember, anything that says projected, we don't care about. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a glass of water... I'm going to stop for just a second, capture this as an episode, and then we're going to continue building on to these things. God, there's a lot of calls of this. Um, well, some of these are just like in where's, you know, so for example, here, I, um, this is just saying I need to build it. This isn't saying I actually need to do something with it. So let's close this one out and let's just focus on these references for now. And I bet like here, yeah, anytime you then need to call like this projected delegate name, we need to stick that in front of it. So, okay, get some water, do another episode. Thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.